back in February of this year, I drove to Quincy, Michigan and picked up a trailer with the intent of putting 4,500 watts of solar panels on. I've already done two videos uh, that detailed my build to some degree. I have all the panels on, I'm just still trying to figure out the two on the nose. And so I'm going to update you where I'm at and how far I've gotten so far. Before I get into my solar trailer and what I've done so far, I thought it was worth mentioning that Tesla showed off a solar trailer at an expo in Germany. At the top left you can see Starlink is installed, but it has three 100 watt panels, nine of them. Six of them are retractable, so I'm assuming the top three would still be charging even when the six on the side would be folded in. Uh, I couldn't find any information on how much battery storage they have, but this is 2.7 kilowatts of panels. And I'm going to be showing my 4,550 watts of panels with about 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage and a 12,000 watt inverter. So let's see how I stack up against the solar trailer. So when I got the trailer it was just bare on the inside. It's a toy hauler meant for sleds actually. And so what I did was I started building the solar panel rack in my living room and was insulating the inside of the trailer with one inch foam from Lowe's. I built the structure for the solar panels out of aluminum unistrut and then I used the extra to build a bed in the nose area and it tied in nicely with the tracks for the D-ring tie downs. Um, it was the same connectors that I used for the solar rack on top. And then I built boxes for my batteries, two rows of 16 each. So I have 64 300 amp hour CATL batteries. Now here, I built this so that I could compress them to some degree and keep them in place. And then I surrounded the batteries by foam that the batteries came with actually. And I could tighten using the bolts on the front to compress the batteries to the back side. So they wouldn't move. Plus, I hear different people with different opinions whether you should compress these batteries or not. Some say the aluminum housing of the batteries, these prismatic cells, already have enough compression but then on the other hand you hear people say that to compress them will give you more cycles out of the batteries. I did it to keep them in place as much as extending the life of them. I used Reflectix on the wall over top of the foam and actually used some furring strips to leave about a quarter inch space between the Reflectix and the other foam because that is when it's going to work best and give you the highest R value. That box has 30 kilowatt hours. There's two BMS's there. That's a breaker for the solar panel input. 50 amp breaker box. Another breaker and on the right there was the other 30 kilowatt hours. So I have 60 kilowatt hours foam underneath with heating pads to keep the batteries warm in the winter and I just added an AC unit. See there on the right is the other box with 30 kilowatt hours. I got my new Harley Livewire in the back. That's part of the purpose of this. I can tow it with my Tesla and I can tow my motorcycle and have energy storage while I'm traveling. The bed is hinged so I can raise and lower it and 
I have some lights tied to DC and I just had a couple batteries laying around so I tied it in so even if I deplete all the AC storage I still have lights and some appliances that can run on DC but with that much energy I can basically run regular AC appliances that's how it looks I have a NEMA 1450 outlet there on the left to charge my Tesla and you can see in the back I have ventilation so it sucks in through the front and blows out through the top to make sure there's airflow for the inverter I know people are going to be critical of the fact I laid it down and question if there's enough airflow but it is running fine especially since I added that air conditioner everything stays nice and cool on the inside that's I have two plugs USB-C uh, I put in some LED lights as well as some puck lights you can run it all through an app or there's a remote straight from China which is where I got my batteries from I could tell you who not to buy them from maybe that's another episode because they were horrible to deal with I had to fight with them over some damaged batteries and nonetheless at the end of the day I got everything I needed the small air conditioner unit seems to be doing well that's just a small computer fan I wired in also to DC because when you're in there carbon monoxide and moisture can build up now the air conditioner should help with that but the platform was big enough for a queen but I realized that if you put a 10 inch mattress on top that I could no longer lift the bed to work on something underneath so I ended up settling with a double and the doubles fine it fits perfectly uh, between the two sidewalls and I'm 6'2 and I can lay down on it fine I think of this trailer as sort of a cross between a full-blown camper trailer toy hauler that is full height and some of those tow behind campers that are basically a bed on wheels that you can't stand up on or in this I have to bend over but I can scoot around on a chair on wheels and I can do more with it than just one of those campers which again are just a bed on wheels so it's sort of in between and the reason why I went with this trailer if you watched the earlier episodes was I want to keep it as low as possible to keep down the wind resistance from my Tesla to hopefully get more range out of it. So I hinged the two panels on the nose so I can lower them to drive and raise them when I'm parked and want to make more energy. And I just used aluminum square box tubing from Lowe's and a piano hinge. So the idea for this trailer is that I can tow it with my Tesla, tow my motorcycle with it, and have portable storage to go off grid. But another part of that is that it's even serving a purpose when it's sitting in my drive. You'll see here in the next video clip, but I tied it into my home electric. I have a 50 amp sub feed that powers more than a third of my house and that's a 12,000 watt inverter so its max output is 50 amp you can see I took all of the rubber forward to the bed area leaving just a little bit at the back for when I do all my motorcycle but again if it's on the road I just throw a transfer switch everything's running off of utility but 
if it's in my drive, I flip the switch the other way and it's getting its power from the inverter. So I had to run 220 out to the trailer so that if my batteries get to a low state of charge, it automatically would switch over to utility. It can also charge your batteries, but I don't do that. Uh, but then 220 from the trailer into the house that runs the subfeed. And that way, it's always being used and producing energy. So, what I ended up doing was putting a couple generator style plugs on the outside of my house. One being 220 out to the trailer from the utility service and then 220 in to run the subfeed in my house. And that's what you're looking at now in this clip. So here's some drone footage of the trailer in its current state. All the panels are expanded. The side rails lock in the out position and then when you push them in they lock in place. And they seem to be, be very secure. Now I have to figure out the front. Right now I just have a couple tent poles holding, holding them up. And I have a couple studs I'm going to put on that diamond plate on the front so that when you lower them in place I'll just put like a like a knob screw to secure it down. I got lucky that it actually meets the front nose pitch almost perfectly. So they're well supported. I just need to make sure wind doesn't get up under them and they come flying off. A uh, comment on one of the earlier videos was what about stone chips? I'm half wondering if I couldn't put some plexiglass or something over top to help prevent that. Then again, solar panels sit on your roof in hailstorms and they fare pretty well. And I don't anticipate doing 70, 80 miles an hour towing this thing. So even with all the four panels being put in place so it's in tow mode, the top four and one of the front are still producing. So I have five panels producing when it's in tow mode because one on the nose and then the five up top are one string and then the four slide outs and the other one on the nose is the other string and I had to do it that way because of the maximum input to that grow watt inverter which is 250 watts and 60 amps I believe. Now it has two PV inputs. All of these 10 panels are on one PV input. I have a second PV input with connectors on the front. You can kind of see on the right there I have some panels temporarily laying on the ground. So I can add another five or six to it to actually give me around 7,000 watts uh, when it's stationary. I don't know that I'd travel with those, but I will mount five on the roof that I can tie into the trailer to produce even more footage. More power, rather, not footage. So here's the last of the drone video, and it's ready to be towed. The one thing I'd like to mention, since I started putting these panels on, I haven't towed it because all the electronics and batteries and the things underneath the bed weren't tied down. They were just sort of dry fit. And I still have some cable management to do, but it's actually in a state where I can tow it, except I have to be able to lock down the two panels on the nose. 
when the panels are coming out the side, they actually act as an awning to some degree. So the trailer worked out very well. You can see I uh, just loaded my Harley Livewire in it to see how easy it is to get it up and down the ramp. And that's it for this video. So if you want to stay tuned for the next video, like, subscribe, but I'm going to do a range test of my 2022 Model X refresh without towing and then with towing and give some comparisons.